Okay, let's talk about positive and negative number rules. And what I'm gonna to try to do is make this super easy for you. This is something you absolutely need to know if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level in terms of mathematics. And this is an example of the things that we're gonna be talking about, something like negative eight plus five is equal to negative three. So this is an addition problem, but the rules that we're gonna uh, talk about here cover multiplication, division, addition and subtraction we're going to learn how to uh, deal with positive and negative number uh, negative numbers with these operations okay so if this has been confusing you for a while most of you probably think this is kind of easy but you make a lot of errors and that is fairly typical of um, algebra students or any kind of math students but what i'm going to do is give you a nice easy way to think about this so you can get these problems right every single time. So we're gonna to get to all of that or get into all these rules here in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I'm gonna leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But I have been teaching math for decades and I've come to this major belief that uh, one, that all students can be successful in mathematics, but uh, it requires two things, okay? One, it requires a student to do the work so if you're not going to do the homework or take notes or you know pay attention, then you're never going to be successful in anything. So you got to be willing to do the work. But the second thing students need to be successful in math is super clear and understandable math instruction, and that's where I can help you out. So if you're um, if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level in terms of mathematics, I can definitely help you out uh, with your respective math courses. Also, if you happen to be preparing for any sort of test that has a math section on it. I'm talking about things like the SAT, ACT, like a teacher certification exam. I have a, a large library of test prep courses you can check out. If you homeschool, definitely gotta check out my middle and high school homeschool math courses, uh, top ranked in the homeschool community. And if you need some math notes, I'm gonna leave links to my uh, math notes in the description of this video as well. Okay, so let's get into positive and negative number rules and let's make this easy uh, because, you know, there's already enough pressure on you to learn a lot of things in mathematics. And uh, we need to make this easy because you have to get these uh, problems right every single time. I'd have to say, uh, for those students that struggle in mathematics, I'm not joking. I'm saying like 50% of students who struggle in math, okay, at least in middle school, high school math, or in college math, will make errors with positive and negative numbers because they never really learned these rules confidently, okay? You have to be 100% absolutely positive that you know what you're doing with these uh, rules. But here, again, we're talking about addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Now, oftentimes these rules are kind of broken up uh, into four, uh, a set of four rules, okay? You learn how to do this, and then this, and then this, and this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these four operations and I'm gonna give you two rules to think about because that's all we really need to know. And uh, again, I wanna make this easy for you. Okay, so here's the deal. Our first rule is gonna be addition. So if you know how to add positive and negative numbers, then you're gonna need to, then you'll know how to subtract positive and negative numbers. I'll explain this in a second, okay? So this is like one rule. Again, if we can uh, teach you how to add positive and negative numbers, you'll already know how to subtract positive and negative numbers. There's a little bit uh, of a twist there, but basically that's like one rule. And then over here, this is super easy. If you know how to multiply positive and, ne and negative numbers, well, then you automatically know how to divide positive and negative numbers because this is the same rule, okay? This rule right here is 100% the same rule. So already you can see we have four operations when it comes to multiplication and division. These are actually the same rules and this is super easy, okay? And I'm gonna show you this right now and then we'll uh, get into addition and subtraction here in just one second. So let's talk about multiplication and division. Super easy rule and here is the rule, okay? If the signs are the same, the answer is positive. If the signs are different, the answer is negative. That is it, but let me tell you what this, let me kind of explain further what, what this rule means. So let's talk about this problem right here. We have four times negative five. Now this four, I, I just have it written like this, but what is the sign of this number? Well, it is a positive four. You don't write it like this. You don't write like a positive four right there but a four all by itself is positive. 
So let me ask you, are the signs the same or different right here? Well, this one's positive and this one's negative. So we're talking about different signs. So the answer is going to be negative. So the way this works is you just multiply the numbers as you do regular multiplication. Uh, but we have to get the sign right. So here, positive and negative, different signs. So my answer is negative. 4 times 5 is 20. This will be a negative 20 because the signs are different. Okay, so let's take a look at this example right here. Here we have negative 4 times negative 5. Uh, are the signs uh, different or the same? Well, they are the same. They're both negative. So my final answer is positive. Okay, super easy. Let's go to division. Here I have negative 6 divided by a positive 3. Again, we don't, uh, if you just see a 3 but like this, that is uh, saying that that is a positive number. So are the signs the same or different? They are different. So my final answer is going to be negative. So 6 divided by 3 is 2, but the sign is negative because the signs are different. Here I have negative 6 divided by negative 3, same signs, okay? So my final answer will be positive. So that is it, okay? Again, uh, hopefully you find this pretty easy, and uh, we're already 50% done with the rules for positive and negative numbers. So imagine that. This is uh, not that difficult. Okay, so let's move on to where students uh, tend to uh, have a little bit more difficulty, but I'm going to make it easy for you. So this is addition and subtraction. Okay, so I'm going to, first of all, set this up by saying uh, this. The first thing we want to be doing when you see addition or subtraction problems with positive negative numbers is to think about money. So a lot of you are like, oh, wow, I like that. So you probably got a little happy face. You're like, money? That's awesome. Yep. Uh, I want you to be thinking about money, and I'm going to show you exactly here uh, why that is. And then also, when it comes to subtraction problems, we're going to change all subtraction problems to addition problems. So if we know how to add, then we can do all addition problems, obviously. And then we're going to take subtraction problems and turn them into addition problems. So we'll be able to do all of this. Okay. All right. So let's talk about this money thing right here. And uh, this is the kind of the concept. If you have a positive number, okay, that's like you having money. OK, let's say you have some money in your pocket. If you have a negative number, that's like you owe that amount. OK, you don't have that money. You have to pay someone that amount of money. So, again, positive, uh, a positive number like positive 12 or 12 is like you having 12 bucks in your pocket. A negative three is like you don't have that money. You owe that money to someone. OK, you hear you would owe three dollars, for example. So. If this, you know, if you can remember this, then what uh, what you have to do is just kind of figure out the financial situation of these problems. Okay, and let me tell you exactly what I'm talking about. Let's take uh, this problem right here. So let's uh, kind of uh, see if we can kind of give meaning to this, but we'll use our little money model to figure this out. So negative eight. So what does that mean? Negative eight. Well, it means you owe somebody eight dollars. So you're like, oh, man, I owe my best friend eight bucks. But no worries. I have ten dollars. Right. So negative eight means you owe eight dollars, but you're you have ten dollars. So negative eight plus ten is what? Well, you owe eight dollars, but you have ten dollars. So you pay that eight dollars back and you have still two dollars positive two. So negative 8 plus 10 is equal to positive 2. Okay, you have 10 bucks, you owe $8, so you get to keep $2, all right? So you still have uh, $2. So if you understand this, then, you know, you're going to be well on your way of mastering how to add positive and negative numbers. Let's take a look at another example. So what does this mean? Well, I have a positive 8. That means I have $8 dollars. Yay, we have money. We have eight bucks. That's a pretty good amount to have uh, in our pocket. You know, maybe it's a five and three ones. Who knows, right? But you have eight dollars. But your best friend comes up to you and be like, hey, you remember last week I gave you ten dollars? I want my ten dollars back. So you have ten dollars, but you owe now ten dollars. You're like, oh boy. So what? What's that situation? What does your financial situation look like? Well, you have to give that eight dollars back to your back to your uh, your friend, right? So here, you take my $8, now you have no money, but I still owe you $2, all right? So this negative two means you still owe $2. You have $2 in debt. So eight plus negative 10 is equal to negative two, 
Okay, so this kind of helps you. There's other formal ways you can kind of um, uh, learn the rules of positive and negative numbers, and you should learn them. So here you can subtract the two and then um, the absolute value of these two numbers and then the, the number with the larger sign is going to be the sign of the answer. And that's fine too, but if you can kind of remember this in terms of money, uh, this makes it so much easier. You're like, oh boy, I have $10 in debt. It's like you owe 10 bucks and you go... Uh, work, you know, uh, you rake up the leaves in your in your uh, uh, neighbor's yard, and they give you eight bucks. And you're like, okay, I have eight dollars, so now um, I'm only uh, two dollars in debt. Okay, however you want to think about it, but just give meaning to these uh, uh, numbers with positive and negative number values because this is the way it works in real life uh, when you're dealing with actual finances. Okay, so like a credit card statement or a balance sheet, a bank statement, you're going to see positive and negative numbers, and they mean exactly what I'm saying right here. All right, let's take a look at this example. So negative 3 plus negative 7. So how can I interpret that? Well, I owe somebody $3, and now I owe another person uh, $7, right? Or maybe I owe this person 3 bucks, and now I, they say, no, you owe me another $7 more, so I have a total of $10 in debt. So negative 3 plus negative seven is equal to negative 10. All right, so here is a nice, easy uh, prompt to end this with. So three plus seven is what? I have three bucks and then I make another $7. So I have a total of $10. So uh, positive three plus uh, positive seven is equal to a positive 10. Okay, so if you understand that, let's go ahead and talk about subtraction real quick and then we'll wrap up this video. So as I indicated, we're going to take all subtraction problems and turn them into addition problems. And now that, I know, now that we know how to add, we should be able to do all these problems. And we're going to uh, use this little term or phrase plus negative. Okay, This is how we uh, take subtraction problems and we write them uh, as addition problems. So I'm going to show you that right now. So let's take this uh, prompt, for example, 3 minus 5. Now, a lot of you would be quick to just say, oh, that's 2. Okay, then you would be incorrect because you're just thinking basic subtraction back from the, you know, third and fourth grade. So again, we want to take subtraction problems and write them as addition problems. And the way we're going to do this is something called plus negative. So the way it works is here's our subtraction, um, our difference operator, our subtraction operators. We're going to make into an addition and we're going to put the negative uh, sign to the right of that uh, plus sign. So here, let me just do this again. So here's our subtraction sign. We're going to turn it into addition and put the negative to the right of that subtraction sign. So let's see that in action here. So 3 minus 5, we're going to turn this into an addition problem, boop, and then put the negative to the right on that number. So now it's very kind of clear um, what's going on. So this is, so 3 minus 5 is the same thing as 3 plus a negative 5. All right, so 3 minus 5, again, is the same thing as 3 plus a negative 5. And now we can kind of go back to our little financial models. You're like, oh, boy, I, owe, I have 3 bucks, but I owe someone $5, so I still owe 2 bucks. So 3 plus negative 5 is equal to negative 2. Okay, so again, we went from subtraction to addition. That is the key. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at a few examples here. And then we'll go ahead and call this a uh, wrap. So negative 7 minus 10, for example, right? So we're subtracting positive and negative numbers. So we're going to take this uh, minus sign. We're going to turn it into addition sign by plus negative. So negative 7 plus a negative 10 is what? Well, I have $7 in debt, and now I owe another $10. So negative 7 plus negative 10 is negative 17. How about this situation, 5 minus a minus 4? So here, this can be quite confusing for some of you out there, but just so you know, a negative of a negative, okay, this is like a negative times a negative, so the signs are the same, this is positive. So you might be saying plus negative. Well, this a, a negative sign also is like saying the opposite of this number, okay, of this value. So this is like the opposite of a negative four. Just so you know, a negative of a negative is always positive. So five minus four, let me kind of erase this here, 5 minus 4, or you, if you want to think of it think of it this way, 5 plus a negative of a negative, it, this uh, all becomes positive. Okay, so 5 minus a minus 4. Let's go back and see that. So you can really get crystal clear. Minus a minus, 
uh, this is going to be positive. It's the same thing as 5 uh, plus 4, which, of course, will be a positive 9. Okay, so this is positive and negative numbers. Hopefully, you know, this was an easier way uh, to, um, you know, remember things. You know, I've been doing this for a long, long time, and those students who, you know, kind of follow these major principles, again, there's two rules, right? If you know how to add, then you're going to know how to subtract, and then multiplication and division are the same rules. And when you're thinking about addition of uh, positive and negative numbers, think about money, okay? If you do that, you're going to get these problems right 99% of the time. Everybody makes math errors. I make math errors because, you know, math is a game of focus, right? So you want to reduce the amount of errors you make by being highly, you know, um, concentrating, you know, in a highly focused state. But beyond that, you want to, you know, have good, solid understanding for these rules, okay? And if you can get these positive and negative number rules down, then your math life is going to be a lot easier. And if this little video helps you out, well, go ahead and consider helping me out by smashing that like button and maybe even uh, uh, subscribing to my YouTube channel. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years. I have over a thousand plus math videos on my channel from basic math to advanced math by calculus and everything in between. So if you like my teaching style, please take advantage of my math content. But my, be my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.